you know this. We out here getting it in. Mendo Dope Band. Dabbling on the bass, Bobo. What up, homie? What up, Bleasy B, Old E. I'm Minnesota Nice. I want to thank you, Dopers, for coming out here and joining us today in the Emerald Triangle. We're out here in Mendocino County, and we are working with soil today. We're getting dirty on the farm. And what we're going to do this year is teach you nerds about no-till soil and reusing your soil, bioremediating the grow site, the property that the soil is on to work in your benefit. And we're gonna harness the power of the soil food web and we're gonna use microbiology to boost our soil life and provide our plants with all the nutrients that they need to grow big, fat, dense, frosty buds. I just wanna thank every one of you for joining me out here. All right, dopers, so Part of reusing your soil is going to be able to add micro life back to it. And if you really want to get the full benefit of everything that was added to a quality soil, then what we need to do is go ahead and boost the soil life on the surface of the soil. We're going to create a lasagna inside of our soil. And this lasagna is going to be multi layers of uh, decomposition and life and death and it's gonna create a humus layer that's gonna be able to provide our plants with everything that they need. It's going to aid in the breakdown of nutrients and minerals that we decide to add to our soil. So if you follow me over here, we have these thousand gallon smart pots. Inside of them, we have last year's blend of Soil King's Big Root Soil. And I must say, this is the first time I've worked with this and it's fantastic, I really like it. It's very, it, it's very loam. It's nice and fluffy. It has a great texture to it. I studied the recipe and everything that went into it is well designed. It has a fast source of nutrients. It's available to your plants right away. And then there's some nutrients and trace minerals in there that are gonna be good for the, for the longevity of the soil. That's gonna be able to continuously provide nourishment for the plants and feed the micro life that's gonna break everything down for us. So what we did this year is we grew a cover crop. So this cover crop here is hairy vetch. And then we also did some clover down in here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna break down some of the nutrients and minerals that we added throughout last year's growing season. And it's going to store them inside these plant leaves right here. And then we're gonna turn this back over onto the surface of the soil and we're gonna bury it in. And all those minerals and nutrients and all the nitrogen that's in this green material is gonna be right on our soil surface. We just created our own nitrogen. Now our goal here is to make a lasagna. So what we're gonna do is take this cover crop after we chop it down and we're gonna smother it in a good compost. And I say a quality compost because if it's anaerobic and it's stinking like shit, it's doing horrible things already, it's not going to provide your plants with the nourishment they need. So we're gonna choose a good compost, we're gonna cover everything, and we're gonna be able to begin to build our humus layer. And today I'm gonna to walk you guys through that process and I'm really happy that you joined me here. This is absolutely the most amazing thing that I believe a lot of organic farmers are overlooking and we're not using the power of the soil food web. We're missing micro life, we're missing microbiology. We're getting too scientific with it. We wanna put the biology back into the soil and let it do its work for us. That's our end goal. We're gonna create a nutrient dense medicinal cannabis that's gonna be full of my, uh, vitamins, trace minerals, nutrients, and it's gonna be enzymatically alive and it's gonna be healthy.
And that's our end goal, is we want to create that product that's going to be the best for you. All right, dopers. So we've spent the winter growing our cover crop out and there's some good sources of cover crop that you can use to your advantage. Um, you can use hairy vetch, purple vetch, fenugreek, clovers. Um, if your soil is becoming too compact and you're not getting the oxygen levels you need, you can sow field radish or daikon radish in there and it will actually rot in place and it'll be a nutrient time bomb. Uh, it's going to bioremediate the nutrients, make them available to the plants right away. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn over our cover crop that we just grew this year. We're not going to disturb the soil surface. We're really just going to go in here with this little hand tool here. And I mean, you can use anything that you have, a hoe, a weed eater would be fantastic. Um, but we like this guy. It makes us more in touch with the soil. And we're just going to go through and start hacking it out. We're just going to cut it down a little bit. And chop it up. Now, this is creating your own nitrogen. And then another thing that we're going to talk about is the ability of legumes to add nitrogen to the soil surface. Or to the soil. Legumes can work together with rhizobium bacteria, which is a purple bacteria that's photosynthetic and it has the ability to pull nitrogen from the air, release it through exudates, and make it bioavailable to the cannabis plant. And in order for that process to take place, the nitrogen first, or the uh, clover first has to accept the nitrogen from the environment. So you have to sow a first crop, and then you have to till that crop in and bury it over, and then the next set a clover that you plant on there, the seed will be inoculated with the bacteria right away. And then any future crop of clover after that will have that bacteria and that ability to bring the nitrogen to the soil from the air. A lot of nitrogen is a source called a monocle nitrogen. That's when it's released into a gaseous form. And we're going to harness that. We're going to grab it. We're going to use it. pretty good we don't need to be too rough we just want to chop it up a little bit now we're gonna bury it with some compost and this year's compost that we chose is soil king special blend here <coughs> it's a blend of different barks peat moss cow manure has some rock dust in it um, I don't believe he used any liming agents in it which is extremely beneficial to what we're doing here um, our soil life is going to uh, diversify our pH for us. It's going to provide us with the optimal ranges that we need. Um, anyone who is worried about pH and stuff like that um, probably just doesn't have their soil balanced out properly. They're using inputs that throw it off a little bit. Um, we're going to create a very heavy fungal presence in the soil as well as a bacterial presence in the soil. And the two work at opposite ends of the pH scale. Fungal is going to be on the low end, and that's going to that's going to provide, you know, a range of your uh, micro and macronutrients at the low end of the pH scale. And the bacteria is going to work at the upper end, and it's going to pull, you know, the nitrogen and everything. It's going to make it available to the plants in the upper pH range. So, let's get dirty with this and let's dump this right on there.
What up everyone? We're back. How much we got? About a half a half a yard of compost? Half a yard. Yeah, of the Soil King blend. Love this stuff. It, I don't know, is the camera picking it up? Is it steaming real nice? It's yeah. steamy. It's it warm. was steaming before. Oh, this is a good compost. Dude, you I, could stay warm overnight. I could probably take a nap in this, <laughs> being the soil nerd that I am. <laughs> but yeah, Bluezy B. You guys are gonna hit it out of the park this year. Um, we're gonna bury this cover crop in this Soil King soil. Um, all the micro life that's in here is gonna start going to work on this cover crop. This is our first layer in our lasagna. We're gonna bury this out and we're gonna start diversifying the soil. Uh, when this is all said and done, we're gonna go ahead and add our dry amendments. It's important that with no-till or any organic gardening at that, that you're continuously adding your inputs throughout the season. You don't need to do anything in excess or in concentration. Uh, minimal amounts and you can always add a little bit more, but it always sucks when you add too much. You know, we've all been there and we know what happens whenever you burn a plant, it really freaking sucks. So let's get to work here, Bleasy. We're gonna go ahead and spread this around. Like I said before, we want about an inch or two across this soil surface. So we took out enough on the top layer earlier this year, huh? Oh yeah, Perfect absolutely. Amount, pretty much. Yeah, this is this is going to be great. Stuff feels nice. Time so, ever seen done some this. worms in it already. Worms are our friends. All right, there's more worms than ever after that 100% organic last year. So what we're doing here, Blazy, is we're creating what's called a humic layer. And our humus layer is going to break down and it's going to facilitate its own acids. And those acids are going to work for us in breaking down the dry amendments that we add to the soil. They're going to make them water soluble. They're going to be a make, make them available to take up by the plant. Microlife's going to be able to consume them, deposit them into the roots, and everything's going to work together. I like it. One neat thing to talk about actually is plant exudates and how they work and how micro life works for the soil. All day long, the micro life is going in there, it's putting in work, it's eating, it's pooping, it's getting fat, it's living, it's dying, it's breeding, Poopy. and it's working hard. And it is, its whole goal, and it knows this, is to build a big plant above it. It builds a plant above it, and it knows that as that plant photosynthesizes, it creates sugars. At the end of the day, when that plant metabolizes and it begins to rest, it's going to send excess sugars down its roots into the soil. And the micro life is after that. It's not there. It really doesn't want to break down your nutrients for you, but it does it for those sugars. Plant exudates are the paycheck for the micro life. That's what makes this whole system work. And if we think that we can put the God molecule into farming, we've got it all wrong. You cannot recreate that process. I don't care what you try. The only way to harness it is to work with it. And that's exactly what we're doing here today. We're out here trying to teach everybody how to properly garden using organics. Not a Frankenstein hybrid of three or four systems that we put together that you know, some inputs are semi-organic or sort of organic, you know, or even a full chemical system where they're using trichome shiners and big fat bud hardeners and everything like that. Well, I promise you that in its natural form with the right genetics in your, in your garden, that it will perform at peak optimal health if you harness the soil food web. And the only way to do that is to create our humus layer. We want to make those acids that are going to facilitate the breakdown of the macro and micronutrients and let our plants eat so they can send those sugars down and feed that micro life and repeat that process. 
We're back. We're in the motherfucking what pig up, pen. <laughs> We're dopers. We're men no dope, no tilling right now. <laughs> I'm Minnesota nice. We got Mr. Bond in the house with us. I usually don't do this, but I'll make an exception. <laughs> <laughs> We're growing for resin this year, so. So what are we about to do, Minnesota All right. nice? What's this next step? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add our dry amendments to the compost that we just put down. And the reason we choose dry amendments, Oldie, is because they're in their raw form. They're minimally processed. We kinda know where they stand right now. They haven't been through a whole bunch of shitloads of, uh, you know, uh, chelation and other processes that break it down that we just don't know what happened behind closed doors. Um, we're controlling the whole system right now. So, you know, it's it's in our hands. We've and always been into the dry amendments too. Yeah. So this is just right up our alley where we're just yeah. doing what we do and mixing Absolutely. new it, stuff in the mix. If you're not farming with dry amendments, it's you're missing the point here. Oh, so. this big old bag. <laughs> so we got crab All meal, right. Yeah, so meal. Old E, you just held up the crab meal there. Um, we're gonna use crab meal. It's gonna be our source of phosphorus and calcium. And a cool thing about crab meal is it has something in it called chitin, and chitin is also found in insect frass. Uh, it's the exo, it's in the exoskeletons, um, and what it does is it kind of sends a hormone or triggers a hormone on the plant to believe that it's under attack by insects. That's and a trip. it, yeah, it, it's really neat. Uh, the plant just kind of thinks that insects are all around it or on it, and and are about to devour it, and it's going to start building its own resistance to uh to pests For you sure. know it's going to start building its own immune system up it's going to work biologically with the soil uh, we talked about those exudates that that sends down to the soil one cool thing is that through the exudates the plant could actually communicate with the soil uh, yeah it, it can drop uh, different you know terpenes and stuff like that in there and the micro life's going to kind of know what's going on you know with with the uh, certain enzymes and proteins that are gonna be in the exudates. For sure. You know, and they're gonna know like, hey, we need to get our asses in gear and start working too, you know, or everything's chill and this plant is loving us and we're doing really good, you know, and that's just kind of in layman's terms, you know, just to break it down so it's easy for everybody to understand. I can um, dig it. We can dig can it. Can you dig it? I'm not, <laughs> not, not trying to, you know, um, to, to say that anybody's not up to speed here or that any system's better than the other, but when we're working with true organics, we're gonna harness the full power of the, of the soil food web. For sure. Or the fo food soil web, as some people call it. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna use our micro life. This is their food source. The reason we choose these inputs is they're safe for our soil. They're not gonna harm our micro life. If we chose a bunch of blood meals and bone meals, and put them on the Big Mac diet, well, they're probably gonna get cancerous, they're gonna get fat, they're not gonna work for us, they're gonna underperform, they're gonna be couch potatoes. All right, dopers, next on the list, Bleasy Bees sprinkling down the kelp meal. Ooh, can you smell it? it smells like the ocean. It's so ocean. Kelp meal's got a lot of natural growth hormones in it that the plant's going to recognize. Um, it's a great source of our trace minerals and one thing to note with something like kelp meal is it's plant-based. It's already bioavailable to the plant. As soon as water hits it, it becomes soluble. Out. The plant could recognize some of the nutritional value that it drops out right away. Um, it's also a great food source for our fungal life. Um, they're gonna kind of live on it. It's not going to totally go away. It's going to stay in our soil. Um, our soil life is going to continuously consume it and work with it. All right, so kelp meal. Kelp meal. What do we got next? What else? We got the neem right. meal. Or, and as you know, well, yeah. What's up with the neem meal? We're trying to right. we're trying to handle these bugs, as yep. everybody knows. So this is bug control right here. Yep. So what we have is neem meal, and neem meal has a pretty decent NPK. I couldn't tell you what the hell it is. I don't follow the NPK chart. I grow biological. Okay, I'm not using scientific methods. I'm using scientific guidelines, but. Really what we're gonna get out of our neem meal is it's going to be a good source of our nitrogen. Uh, it has some phosphorus in it. It has potassium in it. But most of all, it is going to be, it's, it are its antiseptic properties. 
This stuff right here is going to repel bugs. It's going to keep fungus gnats out of the soil. It's going to keep the soil health up. Stinks like shit, but man, it works amazing. I actually like the smell. You really like that smell? It's weird. I almost like it. You know, you want to know what's up? They make toothpaste out of neem meal. He likes well, the I smell. Don't know about it. They make toothpaste out of it. Like it but... uh, neem meal is actually a health product overseas. <laughs> Um, it's beneficial to our bodies as well as our soil. That's trippy. So, all right, that's a neem meal. Neem meal. So, no. Don't skip out on the neem meal, especially if you're having problems with russet mites, uh, thrips, white flies, aphids, and the fungus gnat. All around bugs. Fuck fungus gnats. All those bugs. Gross. We don't, we don't want fungus gnats. So, last on our list here, and the all important glacial rock dust. And we're gonna use before, we're gonna use the glacial rock dust. This is gonna be our source of trace minerals right here. It's gonna be very soft to the plants. Uh, there's a lot of rock dust naturally in soil, and we're gonna add that. The ratios for everything here is going to be neem, kelp, and crab at the same application rate, and we're just kind of covering the soil surface as you can see here. We just, it up. we just tagged it up. We just covered it up. We didn't go too heavy with it. We felt comfortable. We put some in all parts of the soil, but we didn't cake it on there. So neem, kelp, crab, equal amounts. And we're gonna use twice as much rock dust. Twice as much. Twice as much rock dust. Do you think, dog? Woo, yeah, doggy. Sprinkle that rock dust. Sprinkle that. Well, we don't have oh, we yeah. only that one bag. So. Okay, if we only get that one bag. Oh yeah, the crab is. It's fine. You guys are gonna do this in 30 days again. The crab is drastically low. It's extra. We'll go back and do as many as we can. I'm assuming. Uh, this is the most important part right here. Is the rock. Like this rock is. It's got all our trace minerals in it, man. This is all I was going to say, like, all your inert ones and stuff. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, dopers. <laughs> it's time to go ahead and work this into our compost. Finger tipping. Yeah, we're just finger tipping. We don't want to necessarily till the soil at all. This is called no-till, but we're building a humus layer right now. So we're not tilling the layers underneath this. We're just working with the ones that are here and we're gonna help them along and we're gonna start creating our own humic acids right in our container here. One thing to note, Jason. <laughs> one thing to note is that everything needs to be added in moderation. When doing this, when re-amending your soil, add, it at a add your amendments at a comfortable level if you have a gut instinct that tells you, oh, I might be adding too much here, you know, if you're not feeling comfortable with how much you're spreading on your soil, then back off. It's that simple. We're gonna continuously repeat this process throughout the season. And as we do, it's gonna build this humus layer up. And the thing about mixing these amendments into this compost layer is now all that natural breakdown is gonna occur right there with it. And then it's gonna pull it down into the roots through a fungal presence. Pimp shit. Pimp shit. Pimp the soil shit. pimp. Pimping and been pimping pimp. and been pimping. Been pimping. <laughs> Look at right. that. That looks beautiful. Uh, barley straw. It's time for the next step. Barley straw. Oat barley and wheat straw. That's a special. We part. don't need a lot either. It's just like strands. Yeah, just bro, a little you're layer. Gonna, you're gonna trip out. Get the scissors. Let's cut this. I think that we too do. Yeah. You know, it's funny, last year though, we bought so much and we only used one bale for the whole garden. We thought we were going to need way more. Yeah, bro. I have an idea. What's going All on? All right, Bond. So what you're going to do now is sprinkle on this oat, barley, and wheat, wheat uh, hay and straw combination that we got. Uh, some people don't like hay. Uh, a lot of it's been sprayed um, and it has seed. Um, that's not a factor for us here. We we're gonna use that seed. We're gonna we're gonna grow our own from this point forward. We're not gonna have to use um, 
uh, hay or straw that we purchased at our nursery anymore. Just that much, huh? No, a little more. Yeah, we can do a little bit more. You want more than that? Maybe like you want this. it? Yeah, like that, oh, right there. Right, yeah. Right. All right, dopers. Now what we're doing is covering our our compost that's been amended. Um, we're gonna use this to help lock in moisture on our soil surface. Uh, we're also gonna plant a cover crop right through this that's going to sprout up through this dead, decaying material. It's gonna kind of pull it down to the soil surface, make it nice and tight. That's gonna decompose in with our humus layer. It's gonna be a great carbon source for everything to kind of live on. And it's gonna work harmoniously. So next step after this is gonna be cover cropping. And what we chose this time is clover. Uh, I like clover a lot because again, it's nitrogen fixing. We went over that earlier how it pulls the nitrogen from the air. Uh, number two is that it stays short. Uh, we're about to grow some trees in here. They're gonna hang out a little ways. We don't want anything that's really gonna necessarily interfere with that or make direct contact with the plant. It's gonna make a highway for bugs. Or, bug freeway? Yeah, it's gonna make a bug freeway and we can avoid that. So we're gonna plant low growing cover crops that are gonna be beneficial. Turning cover crops into cash crops. That's how this process works. Rinse, lather, repeat. Boom. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to continuously repeat this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Mm -hmm. Boom. Look at that. We did it. All right, everyone. We just got our soil fully extra fucking pimped out. Lasagna. Pimped out. Lasagna tech. Lasagna technique. This is a, a new venture for us, the no-till nation. This is a movement, and, you know, we don't stand up for bullshit, synthetic fertilizers, chemicals, none of that bad shit. medicine. None of that shit. That's not what we're about. We're not about the GMOs, any of that stuff in our lives. We want to promote a positive message, show the world that we're responsible, that we're respectable, and that we know what the hell we're doing here. Exactly. Yep. Always experiment, always trying the most next level organics methods. Try and keep it clean for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we gotta bring this old school technique back and everyone should start uh, expanding and, and getting into this, because... Yeah, I encourage each one of you to find what's right for you. And it's way we... cheaper. Mm -hmm. Gosh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so and the taste, cheaper. I'll tell you what, the taste at the end, every time yeah. we smoked uh, Minnesota Nice's flowers, I'll, they'll tell you what, they're on point very very flavor on you Absolutely. you'll see you'll you'll taste and see the difference doing it like this yes sir it relies on a genetic potential of the cannabis yeah. if your genetics are lacking the system's probably not going to push your plants like you need to because there is no pushing plants here this is going to make your genetics run like a hot rod you want to soup that wow you, yeah you want to soup that charger up well let's do it cutties <laughs> let's get it done yep so once uh, <laughs> once again uh, shout out and thanks to the soil king uh that's what we started with you know we're still rocking it we're just building it up uh shout out to smart pots of course yeah yep the whole crew out there the the weed nerd nation uh, of course sub cool with tga seeds uh getting us some good genetics and yep. uh, we're gonna rock it we're gonna grow some trees and i want to shout out the weed nerd live show uh, yeah. Make sure you tune into the Weed Nerd Live Show on Saturday nights. Uh, I try as much as possible to be there. Um, we answer no-till uh, questions. We talk organics. Uh, we have buku information that we want to share with you guys. Just and, having fun. And yep. yeah, we have fun with it. And we're not there to intimidate anybody. We want everybody to be a part of our culture. Come out and join us. Make sure you check that out. Uh, it's at 7 o'clock on Saturday nights on Subcool420's channel. Yep. Represent. Oh. Shout out Mendo Dope for, for giving all the information and out, putting it out there to everyone. One more month, everything will be in the ground. Blah, blah. See y'all soon. Starts now. Thank you. Peace. <laughs> Golden gold out. Ooh, Golden gold out. They call me the hashing assassin. Take one dab of my hash, it'll leave you fucking gasping. <laughs> Gasping. <laughs> or laughing. Or laughing. <laughs> Lashing. Back smashing. He's back smashing. Extra collashing. Ah! Manhole cover!
A used rubber? A manhole cover? <laughs> All right, so behind the scenes. This is behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, you know, I gotta get, I gotta get my film on. Gotta get the film on. Let's get a little drip, raindrop, drip drop. All right. So this is how we get these badass videos to you guys. It's all worth it in the end.